Jesus loves the church. There's no way around that. There's no other way to say it, but Jesus loves the church. One, he gave his life to begin the church. Two, he calls the church his bride. Three, he is relying on the church to fulfill his mission. Jesus loves the church. The sad thing is that there are a lot of Jesus followers that don't, that don't love the church. And I find that to be extremely heartbreaking as somebody who's given his life to leading the church. Now in Hebrews chapter 10, we are told this, let us not forsake the meeting as believers for worship and instruction as some are in the habit of doing. The writer of Hebrews is making it very clear. It is important that you and I, as Jesus followers, make church a priority. Meeting together for worship and instruction should be a priority for people who follow Jesus. It's a command. It's something he loves. It's something that's extremely good for us. And yet some of us are in the habit of forsaking the meeting of believers for worship and instruction. And that word forsake is a strong word, isn't it? Nobody likes to be forsaken. It means to be left all alone. It needs to be left aside. It needs to be cast, needs to be cast aside and left for dead. Now, people tell me all the time, well, you know, uh, I can worship all by myself. Yeah, you can and you should, but that's still not a replacement for church. That's still forsaking the meeting of believers for worship and instruction. People tell me, well, the church is full of hypocrites. It sure is, starting with the guy who teaches every Sunday. The church is full of hypocrites. It always will be. That's not an excuse to forsake the meeting for worship. And instruction with other believers. Well, there's no good churches. I doubt that. I find that hard to believe, but that might be possible. Even so, you're still forsaking the meeting with believers for worship and instruction. I don't need to go. I can watch it on my phone or TV anytime I want. Yeah, that's true, but it's still just a replacement for meeting together with other believers for worship and instruction. I want to push you today and I want to challenge you. If you are one, like Paul is talking to the Hebrews, if you are one who is in the habit of forsaking the gathering with other believers for worship and instruction, you are missing out on something vital to your faith. And you might be able to limp along without it, but you'll never grow, you'll never thrive, you'll never be what Jesus intended for you to be without the church. Now, I'm not saying you have to come to mind. That's the last thing I'm saying. But I am saying that we should take these words, Paul, serious. That it is a mistake to forsake the gathering with other believers for worship and instruction. So this week, I want to talk about why that is so important. What, why that should be a priority for us. Why we should make it not just something we try to fit into our calendar, our busy lives, but that it should be a priority. It should be one of the things that's on the top of our list to do every week. After all, if Jesus loves a thing, so should his followers. And Jesus loves his church. His full of hypocrites, imperfect, not great, sometimes disappointing church. Jesus loves it. And so should, so should we call ourselves Jesus followers. So let us not forsake the gathering with other believers for worship and instruction as some are in the habit of doing. Let's make it a priority.